This video is the second in a four part series on a plant watering system with soil moisture monitoring. In this video, I'll set up an automated email that reports the moisture level of my plant at regular intervals, or just lets me know when my plant needs to be watered. If you're looking for a public website that provides a graph of your plant's soil moisture level, stay tuned for next week's video. And if you want to hook up a pump and a relay that automatically waters your plants, I'll post that video in two weeks from now. Hello, my name is Caroline and I produce weekly tech videos on Raspberry Pi, IoT, smart home, and voice assistance. This video picks up exactly where we left off in the first video. If you missed the initial setup video with the ESP8266, please check it out. I'll post a link in the description field below. Now let's get started. In this video, we are setting up an automated email that reports your plant's soil moisture level. You'll need everything from the first video, your computer, your ESP8266, and soil moisture sensor. Additionally, you'll need a Gmail account. I highly recommend setting up a separate Gmail account just for this purpose alone because we'll need to enable less secure apps on this Gmail account. And my instructions in this video tutorial are specific to Gmail. We're picking up right where we left off. I've still got the capacitive moisture sensor readings. If I lower the amount of water on my capacitive soil sensor, you see it quickly drops. Our capacitive soil moisture sensor is changing as we change the amount of water that is touching this device. All right, and you can see that on my screen here. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to move on to email notifications. And this is a great way to baseline, is to send yourself an email every 30 minutes. And of course, I said earlier in this video, please set up a separate email account specifically for this. That way it's all organized. And plus we're gonna have to enable less secure apps in order to get this to work. And this is my Gmail account that I'm using specific for this project. I'm gonna go into Gmail, enable less secure apps, and it should take me to the page where I'm going to enable less secure apps and I'm going to toggle it to on, and I have toggled on my less secure apps for the specific email address that I've set up for this project. All right, excellent, I should be good. Now, I'm going to close out my serial monitor for a second here, and let's. we're in Arduino right now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open the next file. Now, last week we downloaded all the files we needed from my GitHub page, so we did uh, number one last week. Now we're going to move on to number two. So we're going to start with number two, send email. We're going to open up send email, Arduino IDE, and I'm going to close out one capacitive moisture sensor. So now in this new file, you do have to make a couple of changes in order to get this to work. All right, number one, you need to know your SSID and your SSID password. You'll change that. Then you need your Gmail address that is enabled for less secure apps and your password to that Gmail address, and then scroll down here, then you're going to have your email subject. So right now the default is Caroline Dunn. This is Caroline Dunn from YouTube, and the email address where you're sending it to, recommend sending it to that same email address that you set up here at the top of the page. My ESP8266 is still properly connected to my computer. My soil moisture level sensor is still active and still connected to my ESP8266 here. All right, let me go through and make these changes really quick. I've made all the changes I need to do for my sketch. Let's hope this works. I am going to upload, which does a verification and an upload, and I'm gonna upload this sketch to my ESP8266. And now that it has finished uploading, I've received a new email in my new Gmail account, and it says, Caroline Dunn, as a subject, this is Caroline for YouTube. Boom, it worked. So essentially, all this sketch does, the initial sketch that I just went over, which is the send email sketch, all it does is it's a one-time email. It doesn't even give you the moisture level of your capacitive soil moisture sensor here. All it does is send you an email that says, 
this is Caroline done from YouTube. And of course you could change it to whatever you want, but that is just to test just the email functionality. And the next step, which I'm gonna to get to right now, is we're going to send the moisture level via email to ourselves. How do we do that? We're gonna to go to file, open, and we're gonna open up the next file in the series, which is the email cap moisture sensor. Hit open, and we're gonna make the same changes that we did to the send email sketch. Just take a look at this, same changes. You need your SSID, your SSID password, the Gmail address with less secure apps, your Gmail password right here, and then of course your email again because you're sending it to that Gmail address. And we're gonna make all of those changes and of course your soil moisture sensor, everything needs to be hooked up exactly as it was previously. I'm gonna make all of those changes, then hit the upload button and let's see if we get an email that has the soil moisture level. Now I've made all of my changes, I'm gonna hit the upload button and it has successfully uploaded my sketch onto my ESP8266. My soil moisture sensor is still active, and sure enough, we get a new email, moisture reading. Moisture reading is at 40%. There we go, perfect. But I forgot to measure the soil moisture of my actual plants. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's do that right now. I'm gonna take it out of this cup of water here, and I'm gonna stick this in my plant now. I'm going to stick this in my plant now so you want to get this down into the soil as far as you can. So this is a pretty shallow pot, so that's kind of hard for me to do, but here you go. I've got my uh, capacitive soil moisture sensor in my soil. So the next thing, let's talk about this uh, sketch here, is that it sends out an email and then it waits an hour. So it's going to send you an email once an hour, every hour, not on the hour, but every hour from when you did it. and then it's going to tell you, hey, here's the soil moisture level. All right, so I don't really have an hour to wait. I'm going to hit the reset button on my ESP8266, and hopefully that should just reboot it and send myself a new email. Oh, and sure enough, it does, and my moisture reading is 34%. All right, so that's pretty good. Now, if I leave this as is, I'm going to get an email every hour, and it's going to tell me what the moisture level of my plant is. That's really important for baselining, and that's really gonna be important for part four. Part three is optional. Uh, it's gonna be important for part four uh, to determine when to trigger your pump to put in water. Otherwise, you're kinda like, when do I water it? How do I know? Well, how does it know? So you've gotta pick out a value. Let's say 34 is your value, 34% is your value. You're gonna say, okay, great. Um, when it get, falls below 34%, I'm going to trigger the water pump and I'm going to water it. And if not, then I'm going to leave it alone. That way we don't overwater our plant or underwater our plant. You can always unplug this uh, ESP8266 from your computer. So here's the USB uh, cable and you can plug it into a, a USB power bank charger or just or a USB power adapter to your wall and it will just work. Since you put in your Wi-Fi credentials, as long as it's within that Wi-Fi range, you will be able to send emails every hour to yourself. But once you get a good baseline, you get several of these emails and you, and you watch it over a day or a couple of days as to the moisture level of what you think is acceptable. You know, so it's kind of good if you start this when the plant is kind of dry and you get, okay, the initial reading of a dry plant is this, then you water it, then you look at your email and that's gonna come in an hour, and then you're gonna say, oh, okay, so this is what it is after I water it. So you kind of figure out where in the middle you wanna water it. You could totally change this code I've provided so that it just emails you when it falls below a certain threshold. Now, if you want to stop here, that's great. You can set up this project to only notify you when the soil moisture level drops below a certain threshold, then you'll know when to water your plant. If you want to continue in this series, join me next week when I add a public website that graphs the soil moisture level. You will need a domain name and hosting for the next week's tutorial. This is my favorite step in the tutorial because I can share it with my friends and they can hold me accountable for watering my plant. If you subscribe and turn on notifications, you'll be the first to see next week's video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Bye now.